In the last video, we developed this uh, new model class called Entry, which is a unit of storage in the Apple refurbished shop. We'll do the shop in a later video, but for now, let's uh, worry about this uh, single units template. And in the Entry class, we got serial number, and also we got a reference type attributes. Of course, both are reference type. It's just that this reference type corresponds to uh, corresponds to an existing class from the Java library uh, in the Java API library. On the other hand, this reference type corresponds to a class that comes from our current project, which is product over here. And we also uh, declare the constructor, and also we got automatically generated setters and getters over here. And also we got an overloaded version of the uh, mutator. And also we got the accessor to string. That's what we developed from the earlier video. And every time once you have finished your developments, as soon as possible, you should start testing your classes. It's really important. You should never ever assume that whatever you have written, even though it's so obvious uh, to you, that might be correct, but you should never assume it is correct until you actually can verify that in some uh, testing framework like, like a JUnit. You should really keep that in mind. All right, so let's now create a new JUnit test class. Under the JUnit uh, package, we already have uh, a class called test, uh, test products dedicated to testing the correctness of product class. So now we should create a new one to avoid confusion. Okay, so let me now close this and close this and right click on the JUnit, uh, JUnit tests uh, package and say new. And then you will say JUnit test case. And then make sure you choose new, new JUnit 4 test. And then what should be the name? Let's be consistent. You always start with capitalized T test and then which class are we testing now entry so tap entry here and everything else you can leave them as default and then you will say finish and as i said before and it will simply give you some default uh test method which will simply just fail and we don't need that however for the fail assertion just keep in mind we actually do have an assertion called fail you might be wondering would it ever be useful to actually fail a test I can tell you that it will be useful. And we'll talk about how to use the fail assertion in a logical way when we talk about Java exceptions. I want to give you some look ahead. Uh, it's kind of beyond the scope of this review tutorial series, but later on in the lecture, you will see how we can use the fail assertion, all right? Let me now uh, develop from scratch together with you, which is very important. I really want to uh, kind of spoon, uh, spoon feed you, you know, in the review tutorial series as much as possible. So you will become independent uh, outside this series. Okay, so what should we do? In, uh, every time, if you want to develop a new test case, uh, you have to put the tag for the test. You're going to say add test over here. And what should be the name of the test? Before that, you got to say public and void. Make sure you say public. Otherwise, the test will not be accessible by the JUnit uh, framework executor and void and then let's say test underscore entry one we are following the same naming convention as test products okay and then it's now empty of course if i simply just click on launch over here which will run the test entry java we get a green bar it's simply because we had no failure of the assertion inside because there's no assertion right but we shouldn't uh, fool ourselves like this, right? We should really do something more meaningful, okay? So what I would like to do is I want to create some entry objects, but in order to really create entry objects, I also need some products to be set uh, to be set as the uh, associated products for the entry, right? So why don't we start with uh, creating some products? Uh, we could have uh, just copy and paste uh, the code from test products, but why don't we develop from scratch? So that's uh, also a good uh, reminder. So products, and then we can say control space. We want to import the products from the model package, right? If you expand the plus over here, you can see we are now importing model the product specifically. And a trick for you, if you can anticipate that you want to import every model class, uh, in uh, every class in the model package, rather than putting a specific name, you can put a star. The star here is something called a weld card. It's a uh, it's a way for saying that I want to include every class in the model package. It's some trick you can actually apply. You'll learn more about the well card in your uh, EECS 2031 when we talk about Unix and regular expression. Okay, anyway, it's just a very common one for you to use. 
All right, so now that we got products here, and we can say product P is assigned to a new product over here, and then we're calling the overloaded version, right? I'm not gonna review that. So that's what you learned from the prod one, right? Okay, so that should be iPad Pro 12.9, and then also original price, I'll just make uh, make up something here. Let's say that's a price. And we can, we can set the various uh, characteristics for the uh, products, I can say p.set, Okay, uh, set, and then we can say finish over here, and let's say space gray. And we can say p dot set storage, and then 1000. So this really means one terabyte, right? The units we're assuming is gigabytes. And p dot set cellular connectivity, let's say to be true. And also we can do over here, p dot set discount value, let's say 200.00, uh, uh, floating point number. All right, so that's a product, no surprise. What about entry? How do we uh, initialize an entry objects? So we got only one choice. Let me remind you very quickly. If you go back to the entry class under the package explorer, you will see the only con constructor we have is the entry constructor, well, the, uh, like uh, the constructor which will take two arguments. Now, question for you based on your understanding of part one. Can we simply say here, new entry, for example, can I say entry, first of all, and notice the entry now will be uh, visible because we, we already set model and then start over here, so you will be okay. Question is, can I say entry E is assigned to new entry? That's the question. Well, notice that entry here does exist, so it can be resolved. However, it seems like we cannot call this constructor here, which seems to be a default constructor because it takes no arguments, but it does not seem like we can do that, right? If I move my cursor over, it would say the constructor entry taking no parameter is undefined, right? You might, well, you might be wondering, didn't you say, Jackie, that there should be an implicit constructor available to us by default? I did say that, however, it's only when there's no other constructor that's actually uh, defined in the same class, all right? So you may want to review what I said in the uh, part one of the video. A very quick recap. If you have no other constructor in the entry class, in that case, the default constructor, like an entry over here, can be used by you. So you can see as soon as I, I save the file, the uh, as soon as I save the file over here, you can see everything compiled. All right. However, as soon as you actually introduce something that's actually uh, well, as soon as you, as soon as you introduce some customized constructor defined on your own, in that case, the default constructor that's implicit disappear, no longer exists. In that case, you can see that's why we got a compilation error. So get that idea straight. Otherwise, you can ask me during the Q and A or maybe office hour or email me. All right. So this one wouldn't work. So that means we got to call this version over here, which will take a serial number and also a products, right? So let's try that. So what I would do is, uh, so now I'm the user of this particular uh, constructor. If I'm the user, I will be forced to actually conform to the constructor, which means I need to pass a string and also I need to pass a reference of some product objects. Okay, I, I do have both. And for the serial number, what I can do is I can say, uh, let me just say this. Let me just uh, write this one, actually, which I uh, I think I also used this serial number before, but let me just uh, type it together with you. Let's say F9 DN 4NK Q1 GC. Okay, it's arbitrary, but I just type it the same as me. And then, so now we are now expecting a products, right? What we're expecting, according, according to the uh, constructor definition, the second parameter should be some address, uh, the address of some products objects. Do we have such address? We do. It's exactly over here. P stores the address of some products objects. That's why we can pass P directly to here. And then I'll trace together with you what the consequence is when we do this, okay, later. All right, so after this, we can do uh, some assertions already. Okay, let's now maximize the window and make sure you can see the star over here. That means the file is unsaved. And also we can see some red 
uh, like a cross over here. That means we got some error. But as soon as I say Control S or Command S, every uh, all the errors go go away. Okay. It's always important for you to save your files to make sure your code compiles. You don't want to wait until you finish uh, maybe a thousand lines and then try to save your file and notice that you got 500 compilation error. That's not a way to go. Let's now see what assertions we can write. The first one is I can I want to get a serial number by calling the uh, corresponding accessor. So I can say assert equals and remember I said earlier you do not want to say something like p dot get uh, serial number for example uh, uh, sorry not p beg your pardon it should be e over here right we we'll talk about entry so e e dot get serial number over here is a string value I said you should not say e dot get serial number equals this particular string value all right this is not going to work not necessarily working always why and i'm not gonna repeat my explanation but i'll leave that to you you can refer to part one uh one of the videos i sp uh, spoke about this i gave you some counter example to see how this uh may uh stop to work okay uh actually rather than assert equals what i meant to write here is assert true because this is some boolean expression and this assertion may work sometimes and may not work sometimes exactly when it will work and, and exactly when it will not work i want you to review on part one okay i'll leave that here as a comments okay and what we really want to do for string value comparison is to have the uh, assert equals okay so we should put expected value first expected value should be uh this uh string literal over here okay put that put it here and then the uh, actual value will be e dot get serial number. That's really what we meant to do, right? And we can now run the test right away for this single assertion. If I run it, I can see green bar. Awesome. Let's now go on. And I do want to write something down first, and then I promise I'll trace that together with you. If you, in case you're not too sure exactly how that works, but now I want to say, what about if I say e dot get products? Okay. That's something I didn't emphasize too much in the earlier video, but let's now do it more carefully. If I go back to entry over here, right? You can see one of the accessor that was automatically generated is actually the return value here is actually products, okay? I do have slides actually to go over some example with you on this, I will, I will show that to you in a moment, okay? So get products over here from the entry class is going to return the address that is stored in the product attributes right you can see remember we said the product attribute here because it's reference type is going to store not the entire object but it's going to store just the address of some product objects right just remember everything's connected right somehow and then once we got this product uh reference we can now try to compare that with something right so what we what, what i want to do now let me write it down first and you can try to see if you can understand if no you can uh, wait for my vi visualization for later I can say assert true over here. So I want to put some Boolean expression inside. I want to say e dot get products over here is going to be the address of some product objects. And the address should be the same as the one that is stored in P. Intuitively, P stores the address of this new product objects. And then we are trying to somehow pass the P as the arguments for this particular entry uh, mutator and internally what we expect uh, what we expected to do is to somehow copy the address that is stored in p into e dot uh, products over here right you can see if you look at the constructor over here we'll simply say this the products and the context object this will be replaced by e right i'll visualize that but i'm just trying to say uh, verbally but Hopefully, uh, you, if you actually follow through my visualization from part one, the last video, so this should not be strange to you, okay? And so that means we actually uh, copy the address from the argument. In this case, that'll be P. Copy the address that is stored in P into uh, EDA products. That's basically what we're doing, all right? And then, so this one should be uh, true. And also, this uh, new assertion I would like to introduce to you. Whenever you want to say two, reference variables actually store the same address 
for the same objects. You can say assert same. Okay, I'll write some notes for you. So you say e.get products over here and p. Okay, assert same and assert equals are actually quite different. So I would suggest you don't want to think uh, think of them as equivalent. No, assert same means the following way. R e dot get product, which is a reference of some products, and p, which is also some reference of some product objects, referring to the same product objects. Alternatively, or are they the same product address? That's another way to see it, right? Both are true, all right? Yeah, so guys, please pay attention to every single detail I'm trying to review over here. If you got any trouble, you should definitely ask, okay? All right, so after this, I'm now just trying to uh, launch the uh, JUnit test again. I got a green bar, all right? So far, so good, right? As I promised, I will trace this all together with you uh, uh, at the end, okay?